Hi there, I'm Dan Joseph with MRC TV. We are here with GOP candidate Charlotte Bergman, who's running for a congressional seat in the 9th District. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Good. And yourself? Good. Thanks for joining us. Thank um, you. Now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, you were uh, you starred in a video that quickly went viral. Um, now, this video, you were um, a guest on a show by a guy, hosted by a guy named Thaddeus Matthews. Exactly. Uh, explain to us a little bit about what happened on that show. I was invited to interview with Thaddeus Matthew because I'd posted a billboard. Um, the billboard stated, Dr. Martin Luther King is a Republican and so is Charlotte Bergman. So he called me and wanted to find out more about the billboard. But upon uh, when I went to interview with him, he broadsided me and started asking a lot of questions that were totally irrelevant to the billboard and even to um, the stances that I plan to take as a congressman in the district. The, the political, the Patriot Political Action Committee put together this organization called Operation uh, Black Storm as a black division so the fool black folk. So I, I, I must ask you, are you a token of white folk and white folk using you to come against black folk? Let me tell you something, and please let me finish. Uh, well, no, 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 is a Republican. Well, 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 well. It's a Republican. Damn, Ms. Bergman, shut up for yes, a moment. Sir. Okay, shut up for a moment. He automatically tried to get you to admit that you were associated with the Tea Party, mm -hmm. and we understand that the Tea Party is uh, is not popular in your district. It's one of the most heavily Democratic districts in the country, the district you're running for. Uh, he, he, what he implied was that the Tea Party uses, and he, he said that, uses African Americans to, to make it seem as though the Tea Party itself is not racist, uh, even though, as he said, he thinks they are racist. Is this a tactic that they use a lot? Um, the current incumbent started it. He attacked the Tea Party last year. I have attended a number of Tea Party events, and um, I have run into the the. I have been received with open arms. I have not encountered any racism whatsoever. As a matter of fact, the only racism that I had experienced came from the gentleman. That is yeah, he said he didn't want to shake hands with you because he didn't want your whiteness to rub off on him. Get your stupid ignorance up out of my studio. Another token ass Negro that wants white folks to, to approve you. Take your stupid ass on out my damn building because I'm, I'm tired of you, you, you Negroes as being bought by white folks that want to walk up in there. I, I don't need to shake your hand. Get your ass hell up out my building. Get on out of my building. I, I, I'm scared because some of that whiteness might rub off on me. Um, I'm sure my mother and father would be disappointed because both of them are black and I am proudly a very black female and I have black children also. Are, are you, were you surprised that he said something like that? That I was. something that racist? Absolutely I was surprised. You see my purpose for going there was be I knew that he he had a number of viewers that would I would not encounter under normal circumstances. And I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to get my message to the people that listen to him. Like he said, he did make one, one point, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but he said you weren't visiting the uh, more predominantly African-American parts of the community, parts of the district in your campaign. Is that true? Um, his statement is consistent with his lack of knowledge about the 9th District. He actually thought that the 9th District only um, was around a small segment in the district. I have 705,000 people that I am going to need to reach. Now, here's what has happened. His statement is incorrect because after the last election, based upon my talking with former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, she suggested that I do it again. And I spoke with a number of people. I have consistently been getting into the black neighborhoods, mostly the churches, and those are the people that I'm targeting because they share my values. Now, uh, I may not have um, been able to meet many of the people that he is aware of, but I have been networking, I have been campaigning since 2010. 
Uh, it's a large district, and I am making inroads more than he realizes. Like, like I said before, this district is considered to be one of the strongest Democratic districts in the country. It's considered a safe seat for the Democrats and for the incumbent congressman. Why do you think you can change that? Well, one of the things that it's currently in my favor is the redistricting that has just occurred. Okay. And um, there are 94,000 additional people that are being moved into the district, and those people will have a significant impact on the next election. Mr. Thaddeus Matthews does not. Well, actually, I think he does. And I think that's the reason that I encountered the extreme victory all that I did. I think that they realized that the 9th Congressional District is now in play as a result of redistricting. So you think he was, he was afraid? I think he was afraid, and I think the current uh, incumbent is nervous, too. And one of the key reasons we realized that is because he became very upset because a core segment uh, of the Jewish community was was taken out of the ninth district. So his stronghold is not as strong as he it is, was. He is Jewish. He is Jewish, yes. And many of the Jewish uh, constituencies have been taken out of that district. And I'll, I'll share with you this. I have been knocking on doors, canvassing. I'm hearing a different story than the 20 or so supporters that Mr. Thaddeus Matthew uh, his, that are his followers. Has Mr. Matthew apologized to you? You know, there was a station that interviewed him but would not give me equal time. And I heard that there was an apology about the uh, not wanting to shake my hand because the the whiteness would rub off on mm -hmm. him. I think that's the only part of the apology that I was told he, he, uh, he stated. But Mr. Matthew does not understand. Mr. Matthews is the face of the extreme liberalism in that community. Mr. Matthews is the reason for the problem that we're encountering. About 61% of the people in the community are African American. Of that number, approximately 85% of them share my values, conservative, Christian, and Mr. Matthew does not. And I don't think he's aware of that. When I walk down the street, nobody has heard of the interview. Nobody has heard his message for the most part. I ask people about it and they, they say, what are you talking about? So he, he has, uh, the information about the interview has gotten out nationally. Well, I, w I was going to ask you about that because our video has a, a huge number of hits. It has over 300,000 hits. Uh, the video has gone viral. It's gone everywhere. Since uh, conservatives have seen that video, have you noticed an increase in your support? I have. Um. I have. <laughs> and I'll tell you, we're ready to fight. We're ready to go into the lion's den and take the message to the people that need to hear that message. I'm not afraid, and I won't back down. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Dan. Good luck on your campaign. I'm, I'm, look, it's going to take more than luck, but... It's going to be a tough fight. But I'm going to invite you to join us when I'm sworn in, because we feel very strongly that we're going to win this this election. And I'd like to ask your audience to go to charlottebergman.com, look up my issues and, and uh, look up the information that I have posted on the website. It will enlighten and to you. See, and see the video too, the, the video with Mr. Matthew, because it is an amazing lesson in how vile and racist liberals can be exactly when they're confronted with something that they don't agree with politically. But you know, as a Frederick Douglass Republican, that 68% of that uh, population that I told you about that share my same values, that is what is going to help us to really bring people over to vote their values instead of voting emotionally or continually voting the democratic way. People, that, that video shows the face of hatred and anger and most people don't share that. Well, I, one of the things I found, found sort of funny, I mean, he called you ignorant. And anybody can tell that you're not, you know, you're a very smart woman, anybody who, who watches these videos. Um, but he actually pronounced the word ignorant wrong. 
sort of saying to myself, that's, that's a little odd, but uh, you know, it sort of exposes who he is. And uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. You're a very thank brave you, woman. You. And uh, it took a lot for you not to storm out of that interview <laughs> right at the very beginning, because yeah. I wouldn't have put up with it. Yeah, I just needed to reach at least one person. Well, I and think it you reached a lot it. more than that. I praise God for that. Thank you thank so much. You, my dad. Thank <laughs> you.